This morning we have Liz up the mast. It's easier to get me up than it is Jamie. Motoring at two knots into the swell, but I didn't realise it was going to be so lumpy. Well, there's a wave that was higher than your head then. So it's actually turned into a really nice sail. This morning we have Liz up the mast and she is replacing the bulb in the tricolour. Now it's an aquamarine 40 series I think, so it's a two-in-one unit. It has the anchor light and the lower and then the tricolour in the upper. So there's two bulbs and she has to twist the whole unit off before getting access to those bulbs. It's not easy. I've done this once before myself up at the mast um, because the halyard only takes her so far up the mast she has to lean up with her arms to gain access to it. Very tricky. So I'm up the mast again. Uh, it's easier to get me up than it is Jamie. Uh, I've got to change the trickler bulb. So to make life easier, I've taken the whole fitting off and sent it down to Jamie in a basket. He's going to change the bulb, put it all back together, clean it up and send it back up. And then I've got to just try and get it back onto the top of the mast. Wish me luck. So here is the unit. As you can see, there are two bulbs, one lower and one upper. And I've just checked and the upper one is 25 watts and the lower is 10. They were LEDs and this one's still working, but we don't have a spare LED, which is a bit unfortunate. So we've got one of these traditional Bay 15 bulbs. And then this is the casing. Now what you can see here is of course a trickler at the top. So when we put this back on, we need to make sure it's facing in the right direction, of course. And the way it works is that this mounts onto the mast and there are three pins there and they obviously tally with the fitting on top of the mast. And then it slips over the top and as you can see, we've got a little O-ring, I suppose it is. It's a plastic ring, which helps create a seal. Now, ours is in two parts, and I don't know if that's broken or if that's by design. I suspect it's by design. And this drops down. And you can imagine, if I put this on, and it drops down and it twists onto the bottom here. Easy to do down here, of course, but if this is up there doing it, and she's doing a great job. Okay. Well, next up on Liz's list of things to do while she's up the mast, whilst I gallivant around with cameras and drones, is cleaning these spreaders. Yes, you've heard it correctly. We are going to clean the spreaders. We think actually that these first started developing mould when we were last here in Sabana Cove Marina because it is very damp here. So we're going to uh, send the bucket up with some soapy water and this is going to give them a quick scrub. So I don't know how much that you can see, but it's coming off pretty easily, which is encouraging. I thought it was going to be a bit of a nightmare getting rid of this, but uh, I guess it's dried off. Bit of hose action now, we've sent the hose pipe up there. Oh, we're gonna get wet. Doctor Who and the Strimmer Monsters. <laughs>
bit of a shit start to the journey. Really shit. Like motoring at two knots into the swell and uh, the wind has been on the nose which we expected but didn't realise it was going to be so lumpy. Um, so we just need to get around the first corner of the peninsula and we'll be a bit more square on to the wind uh, which is not predicted to die, it's going to carry on like this but once we turn that corner we should get a good angle. At the moment uh, we've put the mizzen and the staysail out, the staysail is really tight but it's still flapping, it's just on that edge there so haven't quite got the right angle to sail just yet. Can't bear away off the wind because um, it's a great big industrial estate just there. We're not the only ones not enjoying this. Poor Millie, uh, who normally would be sitting next to me underneath the cushion here, went down below and she was sick. She brought up a hairball, but I'm sure it was brought on by the motion here, so it's pretty horrible. Don't like it at all. The last time we came through here was on our way back from Anambas. And uh, in fact, the very first time we went through this way, I remember it being beautiful, sunny, blue and gorgeous and just thinking how lovely the sea was. Anyway, can't wait to get around the corner where we'll see that lovely blue sea and we should be sailing as well. Oh, I, I won't be missing this. I really won't be missing this bloody noise on the radio. We got around the corner and now we're just waiting to get in the right position for the wind which is basically up our bum. So we have prevented the mizzen and we've pulled out the Yankee. We've actually put about two reefs in it and we're still doing five knots uh, which is about right because any faster we'll end up getting to Tierman at night time. So uh, we're almost on the right course now. We've just got a couple of wrecks to avoid um, but after that uh, it should be plain sailing just as the sun's setting. I have to say, this swell is a lot bigger than I anticipated. Slice the engines off. Mm. But we're really rocking around a bit. So it's good for the old, you know, core, what is it they call it, core stability. Get the muscles going. Well, there's a wave that was higher than your head then. <laughs> there's another one. We are on course, very rolly, but I've just said to Liz when everything else is sorted, like our course and the sails not flapping, I don't mind the rolling. Engines off, so hopefully it should be like this for the whole evening. And I'm hoping not too much traffic either because it, they will stay over outside the 30 meter contour line, which is the line that we're following up.
Well, after a very crappy start, when we turned that corner and ran with the wind, it's actually turned into a really nice sail. So most of it was done during the night and uh, pretty much left the setup as it is. We've switched the mizzen over, but we've still got that uh, Yankee pulled out, just doing a comfortable five knots or so. And as you can see now, we've got Tierman uh, right behind us. And Liz, on her watch, saw a lunar eclipse, a partial lunar eclipse. She couldn't quite work out what it was and we've just got internet connection. She's just spotted a, a headline news explaining that it was actually a little lunar eclipse. So that was quite nice for her. So uh, yeah, just got another hour or so to go before our first waypoint at the bottom of Tierman. And then we'll probably uh, drop the sails as we bear off the wind and um, motor to our anchorage. I think for a nice refreshing beer and a little snooze. Tierman and welcome to a very busy through fair. This is where all the ferries come. You can hear one behind me. I should probably turn around so he's not so noisy. Uh, we did actually anchor over there, but we had two problems. The first was the smell of the garbage. There's a garbage depot there and fruit bats. We had an issue with fruit bats flying around the boat at night and landing on our rigging and our wind instrument gear. So we've actually moved over to the other side. Uh, so we've got rid of the smell and the fruit bats, but the problem now is we've got all these ferries going past. It's a little bit rocky and rolly. So we thought we'd go into town today, uh, do some provisioning and uh, start thinking about our trip over to Anambus. Uh, we have two things to contend with. The first is that at the moment there's a typhoon blowing uh, westwards over the southern tip of uh, China and that's sucking up all the air so it's been very windy here. Could be good sailing. Uh, but the other problem that we've had is that there was a piracy attack right in the path of our um, route to the Anambus. We'll talk a bit more about that later, but first of all, let's go in town. So here we are at Tierman Marina. Tierman Marina, that sounds like a liqueur. Uh, Tierman Marina. Uh, we, now we were last here two years ago. We did quite a bit on this, so uh, I'll put a link to the episode up in the corner there in the description. Um, but they've tidied this place up. It used to be a bit uh, scrappy and um, a bit run down, but uh, they've improved things somewhat. So there's quite a few sailboats here. Um, we're just gonna come ashore get some phone credit, hi, and um, just uh, go for a little explore and give you a little refresher of this beautiful tropical island, it's one of our favourites. Go. Yeah. We are in the system. Pleasure holiday, right? Yeah. Last port of call? 
Sabana. Sabana. You ready for date? Yesterday. Yesterday. Right? Yep. Tierman's a duty-free island. That's what one of the things it's famous for. And one of the best things you can get here is chocolate. So we uh, we like to keep some dark chocolate in the fridge. Just have a bit now and again. Of course, the other thing that Tierman's famous for is duty-free. And Langkawi and Tierman are the only duty-free islands pretty much in the whole of Malaysia. I think there's one more area perhaps on Borneo. Uh, but it's our only opportunity to stock up with cheap booze. Uh, booze generally on Malaysian uh, territory is expensive. So that's why we like to stock up here. Liz is nipped in and she's checking out all the whiskies. Liz is in the most important shop in Tierman, and that's the booze shop. Yeah, and that's Carver. I haven't got really Prosecco, champagne's too expensive, but we're going to try this. If it's good, we'll come back and get more. That's all. Everything's dark because the electricity is off in Tierman, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, we're hoping the authorities have said it'll all be sorted by tomorrow, but nobody believes them. Okay. <laughs> Okay, it's the Battle of the Fruit Bats. Uh, we've just returned to the boat and the sun's gone down and we have a bit of an issue at the moment with the fruit bats who are flying around and uh, landing on all of our wind instruments. You say flying foxes, I say fruit bats. Same thing. Anyway, so what we're doing is we're taking to uh, shining a light at them and then as they approach we uh, wiggle the halyards to try and uh, confuse their sonic radar that they used to land on top of it. There's one. There's one. <laughs> Did you get him? <laughs> 